year. He, no, yeah. he's older than that because he no, says like it's been twenty years since I saw Ra- Rahim. Rahim Khan. So he's at in the his end. So late thirties. Yeah. By the end. And then so he also talks about how in. Soria has like the gray hair and like oh. double chin. Double chin. Uh-huh. Um, no. but. but like I feel like <laughs> at this point though, I mean when Soria, I mean Soria has to be fairly yeah yeah I guess 30, 25 ish. I just I don't understand thirty five thousand dollars. I think that shows that's almost like I I also see his pride in here like every mm-hmm. every single time I see like he has to have the grandest thing, um, and it takes nearly the balance. So he has more than thirty five thousand. Um, he rented a large Afghan bank and wallet, dis- not just an Afghan, you know. <laughs> He's not looking mm-hmm. for these discounted things. He wants the tuxedo, and and then he's getting the traditional clothing. But then again, like, we also spend more money than we have sometimes on weddings. Correct. Like it's just how important. And then you pay on it for years. I don't know. Uh, no. Which to me, that's not another <laughs> conversation. Anyway, on 174, yes. um, maybe we can rhetorically look at this mm-hmm. um, paragraph. It's yes. Starts, it's like the second, for, like, full yeah. paragraph down. As words from the Quran reverberated through the room, I thought of the old story Baba of Baba wrestling a black bear in Baluchistan. Baba had wrestled bears his whole life, losing his young wife, raising a son by himself, leaving, leaving his beloved homeland, his watan, poverty, indignity. In the end, a bear had come that he couldn't best. But even then, he had lost on his own terms. Um, I feel like the, you know, it's it's not it's not a whole sentence. It, these are just I don't know what they were called. You fragments. Know, like, fragments. No, not fragments. Uh, some of it's fragments, but then it's some of it's just like one word and a period. Right, one word and a period. Which is kind of it shows the thoughts. Right. Like as they are. Stream of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's just based on his like maturity. How like as a younger child, like the bear was a little literal bear, and now it's yeah. become like. Um, just challenges that he had to overcome. And as a child, he wasn't—he didn't see any flaw in his father. I mean, yeah, he had lost his wife by that point, and uh, he raised a son by himself. But at that point, when they were still in Afghanistan, he never saw his father as anything less than superior to everybody else. I mean, he saw him in the brightest light, and I think that also shows maturity now that he's able to see. I mean, the really difficult life that he's gone through. Um, for me, the part that, like, now more so, that, like, really fascinates me is raising a son by himself. Did he really raise Amir by himself? That's yeah. true. Yeah. He always like, had lots of help. Th- do you know what I'm saying? Like, you got, I mean, you all He totally, that's true. He didn't, he totally left and, Ali and Hassan right. out of that he, entire. Like, he raised. And Amir Khan. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Amir Khan. And, and that's. Because it's significant. Right. It's just something that, you know, like, as kids, I, I believe, like, we even overlook. I, I think that puts that point that, like, if we revere someone so much, you know, we put our parents so high up that we, like, we give them, we credit them with everything. And I feel like it's still the fact that Amir is still a childlike at this point. You know, when he looks mm-hmm. up at his father, as mature as he is, and no matter how he ages, he always looks at his father as this figure mm-hmm. of awe. I just, I, I found that tickling for me, <laughs> raising a son. And he had lost on his own terms. Indignity. Is that, like, that? these are things that, like, I'm... Like for Amir, like I, I don't think that's losing li- like you not he didn't lose on his own terms. Like you stopped smoking, you could have lived longer. Do you know what I'm well, saying? Well, like, that was the fact his that own he refused terms. the treatment and that uh, right. So it was his it was his own terms. Like he right. could have, but he didn't. And so I must feel like he's like proud of that. Like I don't know. For me, like I feel like the way it's and this yeah we talked about yeah. him. It's really not anything to remarkable. Be proud of, right. It's like, huh, well, I can smoke myself to death too. It's, it's not <laughs> okay. really. <laughs> um, moving on. Let's look at. Let's see. Mm, this is also, I think, a big turning point on the same page on 174. Last paragraph. Listening. This is like at the funeral or whatever. 
-hmm. Listening to them, I realized how much of who I was, what I was, and had been defined by Baba and the, the marks he had left on people's lives. My whole life, I had been Baba's son. Now he was gone. Baba couldn't show me the way anymore. I'd have to find it on my own. The thought of it terrified me. I don't know really what to say about it, but I just thought it was kind of pivotal. Like how I mean, he's coming to the realization that, I mean, we talked about that before, how he found his worth in his father's eyes, and now that his father was gone, what did he have? I mean, right. at this point, he is married, and like he's kind of building a life for himself with his books and his college degree and everything. But nonetheless, like that's who he was. Mm -hmm. So, whatever. For me, what I found, like, this is just me being sad, which I, I, I suppose. But, like, the first cuss, cuss word that comes out of Amir is after his father dies. In any conversation, he's had. Oh, yeah. It's on uh, chapter 179, like, ah. towards the end. You know, when Soria tells, like, yeah. is, is more thorough mm -hmm. about it. It's just, I found that word. That's true. Like, right after his father, like, after his father dies, he's never had a conversation where he, he did. Mm-hmm. Um... On 179, we can look at this in today's context. So, mm -hmm. um, it's the first paragraph. Their sons go out. Their sons go out to nightclubs looking for meat and get their girlfriends pregnant. They have kids out of wedlock and no one says a goddamn thing. Oh, they're just men having fun. I make one mistake and suddenly everyone is talking at night. And, and yeah. I have to have my face rubbed in it for the rest of my life. And they talk about that as like an Afghan double standard, but I think it's also an American it's, double it's standard. Been, it's an ev yeah. been like that throughout time. Yeah. It's not going to. Yeah. As long as we don't, I mean, it's it, the thing is, is like it's the mothers. I mean, I think like it's the, it's the girls that actually like hyping the whole facts up. Like and we like, want to know when did, did mm -hmm. what did you do last night? And then once we know, and then it's like, oh, the whole school knows what you did last night. So I feel like as long as we ourselves don't stop. Well, okay. and, like, it's not even just a matter of knowing, it's a matter of how you perceive it. Where yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know this for yeah. sure, yeah. but, I mean, you who have brothers might know this more, but at an all-guy school, if a guy, you know, says what he did on the weekend, it was just, oh, like, they was, right way to go, but, like, yeah. yeah, I don't know, they, you know, school or whatever, right. but, I mean, I don't know this stuff, but like, if it's Callie. a girl coming in on the weekend, like, it's very hushed and it's very. And it's more like, are you okay? Are judgmental. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I mean, without realizing it, sometimes you perceive them differently mm -hmm. to the rest of whenever. Right. So many connections to the Scarlet Letter. In this That's book. what I was going to say. I know. Keep going back That's to my it. favorite book. book. Not really. Oh, but I, really I was going to say, you're pushing it. Like, no, yeah. I really like you Scarlet Letter. Oh, my God. You pushed it. Stop. Um, I think if we go back a little bit, I, I don't know. I, we might not have much to say about this. But when it's right before um, they tucked uh, Baba in, and Soria wanted suggested that she moves in with Amir and mm -hmm. his dad. And I think like that also, like, you know, it let go of girl power. You know, usually it's she, I mean, it's not a choice that she makes. I mean, in these situations, like, I don't know, Indian customs or Pakistan or Afghanistan customs, that you go to your husband's house and you live there. That's not something that's up for discussion. And Amir did not bring that up to her, but mm -hmm. she chose that herself. I just, I found that cool. Right. Um, so yeah, we can skip a little bit and on, if we chill with it, we can go to 197. And this is um, when he goes back to Rahim Khan, who tells, uh, what does he tell? Oh, um, he tells him, Come, there's a way to be good again. And so uh, Amir makes a trip back to Afghanistan. And this is his thought as Rahim Khan. Well, a thing that made of skin and bones pretending to be Rahim Khan opened the door. A creative writing teacher at San Jose State used to say about cliches, avoid them like a plague. Then he'd laugh at his own joke. The class laughed with him, but I always thought cliches got a bum rap. Because often they're dead on. But the aptness of the cliched saying is overshadowed by the nature of the saying as a cliche. 
For example, the elephant in the room saying, nothing could more correctly describe the initial, the initial moments of my reunion with Rahim Khan. Um, so uh, in the, like, I don't know what kind of, I think it's interesting how he kind of takes a break from what's happening to recount this thought mm -hmm. and uh, kind of go through the story and then put his own thoughts in about cliches. And then the aptness of the cliché saying is overshadowed like by the nature of the saying as a cliché. Mm -hmm. It's a good word choice. Good diction. Good diction. <laughs> Actually, good diction. <laughs> Personally, for this chapter, what I really like, and I feel like this chapter specifically for me, really like the intent, like who who he won, like for his audience, was clear because he was very. I mean, he didn't describe to you what a Seven Eleven was, but here he is describing like the Hindi music was on. There was mm -hmm. like you know there was very detailed explanation of what like Pakistan was like his ride right from the, the taxi and plus goes to Khan, and mm -hmm. even then. So I think. The audience is much more clarified in this chapter. And it kind of like reflects on the idea of like memory itself, because mm -hmm. when you're younger, you really don't remember as much mm -hmm. as you do like currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a reason we remember we remember more about high school than we do about first mm -hmm. grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and kind of along with that point, what do we think? I think it's really neat how, I mean, there are so many F. Okay. I might be saying this wrong, you can correct me, whatever. Like, different, like, Afghanistan words and names that are used throughout this whole, I mean, novel. And some of them are explained, some of them will give, like, a little definition right afterwards. Mm -hmm. But some of them aren't. And, uh, but we still know what they're saying. Just the context that it's in, like, he yeah. sets it up. So you, like... It's like, oh, I can get that. Even if we don't know the word, even if it's not explained, like... And I think that's kind of artistically done in of itself. I just think it kind of like reminds us as like readers that it's from the perspective of someone who isn't mm -hmm. yeah. a white American. American. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like white. And that's important too. As far as the language, I mean, like he would talk in his like Urdu is like where Kudaf is and all that comes from. That that that's like a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? Like that's more a mm -hmm. Muslim, North Afghanistan. That's what like if you're. Afghanistan and from Pakistan, that's something that you'd speak in. So like, I, I think if if you'd know like that helps out as well. I was going somewhere with that. Okay. All right. All right. Um, do we have anything else to say as far as rhetoric and canons? I mean, we kind of touched on memory. We like the, why this is memorable. Um, because. I mean, we talked about that last time. I think more, and I don't know if that's actually changed. So. Um, we talked about audience. Um, the style of it is very much a narrative mm -hmm. and uh, what happens, but then there are moments where um, it's definitely stream of thought. And uh, I think those are sometimes the most powerful because I don't think that was in it as much in the beginning as right. it is now that he's older. Right. As he's getting older, you hear of like nostalgia, like mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And then, uh, um, you know, the pathos. We talk about that. We talk about ethos. Um, logos. Um. I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of. I mean, the only logos thing that you could possibly find is the backdrop of. It's a fiction novel. In I don't think that right. that's so, quite as pronounced. Um, talk about context. Um, I want to get to like be a thousand times over yes. just because yes. he uses a thousand a lot in his books and I'm yeah. not really sure what it's symbolic of I, I, and I want to know I, it doesn't I think it's almost like a thousand times over like for a you thousand splendid. A, a thousand splendid a thousand splendid right. a thousand I know splendid. Splendid. I think maybe that's a really good point what do you think from you what is from like what's it symbolic of to the author to use to I don't even know if it's the number or if it's just like I mean I think that's just from a child, because that's when he first heard it, like, for you, uh, um, a thousand you know, times a over. A thousand times over. And I think that was just the biggest number that they could, I mean, think, of, think yeah. of, and that just meant forever. And I think that brought him solace mm -hmm. in knowing that 
I mean, like, basically, like, I've always got your back, like, mm -hmm. no matter how many times you need me, I'm here. It's over a hundred. I think maybe that's the only thing that I could possibly think Because of. that's limited. That's pretty limited. Right. But then, like, a thousand, like, no one's going to count that. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No one's going to count that high, so right. it wouldn't even get noticed. Something that That's an been, interesting point. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the orphanage, we hear about oh. in chapter 15, the orphanage is destroyed. Now, I said, oh, and second back reading it, I'm like, is this symbolic to what mm -hmm. happens to Afghanistan in the future? Because usually children oh, are the, the future. future, and they destroyed. Wow, this that's deep. Pain of <laughs> it just comes out sometimes. That was real good. <laughs> no, but, sorry. Yeah. But... That's something that really was like, hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and this orphanage was the best. I mean, that was. Baba's the one that Sir, that, that, that made her. that. Wow. Um, and also his head dying and yeah. kind of his legacy yeah. dying. That's yeah, yeah. in Afghanistan. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's like he wasn't even there. Exactly. Wow. Everything That's he really stood sad. for is gone. Yeah. Like and their house is taken over by the Taliban. Yeah. Which, so everything who knows that that's held him to home. Right. So even if he still was alive and they were able to go back, he would have nothing to go back to, mm -hmm. and he'd still be like miserable. He'd say it, but nobody. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a depressing thought to leave on. <laughs> Anybody have anything <laughs> more uplifting for our audience here? Yes. <laughs> or meeting his mom. I want to talk yes. about that. Yes. Oh wow. That was oh. Oh, the 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 explicit. That was. Explicit Im imagery. I was like, yes. Oh. <laughs> Very good imagery yeah, with actually. the burqa mm -hmm. and the tea. Wow. Wow. Was it really a feel good moment? No. no it was not. I, I, not and the, the little reunion I was hoping I like for. Well, and like we don't, we didn't think that there would be a reunion. We kind of assumed that she was dead or gone or never come back. And okay, this might sound terrible, but I kind of feel like it's bad thing to do with that late in somebody's life. I mean, they were overjoyed and happy to have her, and like they nursed her back to health. But, like, it's not the way to, I don't know, I guess it wasn't a choice. It's just, it seemed very uncomfortable to me. I think that this is like where the saying, you know, better late than never comes out, and I think... Go ahead. No, 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 no go ahead. I can't. I can't. Sorry. You guys said we're blown to yeah, thank you. We'll talk next, next, next. All right. Yeah, I know. All right, well. Good. So, yeah, she came back. I'll leave it at that.